This does look a lot more believable and realistic. Texturing the glossy port allows you to have any kind of effect that you want to implement inside your reflections to have any sort of distortion no matter what the look it is just by using uh, procedural clouds or image maps the effects are endless now let's add a, uh, start adding some colors to our floor and see what else we can do with this reflection we'll start by adding grid a 2D grid will work you'll find it inside the textures grid we'll pipe this inside the diffuse value let's do a test render and see how it looks leave the default colors as is we'll decrease the width of the cabots here to something like 0.1 see how they look them a little bit and decrease the diffusion so it's not very blurry between them right so now we have color added to our floor but notice something all the reflections right now are tinted blue this is not very realistic especially on ceramic floor like this usually the reflection is mirror-like especially on perpendicular surfaces the problem we're seeing here is the default reflection implementation inside Mentor Ray is based on overlay blending which means that the reflection colors are being over blended in an overlay fashion over the diffuse value this doesn't help us much so how can we change the reflection color to achieve a more believable look we can try increasing the re reflectivity values see how this looks so the color is still blue our reflection is blown out that's for sure and there is a bit of red from the sphere over the uh, the blue ceramic floor but the overall color is still blue which didn't, didn't solve our problem yet another method people use to overcome this problem is increasing the reflection color let's try this add it to 1.5 like this to the side and increase the our render region just to see this more clearly this didn't help as well so changing the amount of re reflectivity or the reflection color didn't really change the ref our reflection color in cases like these most people will resort to compositing where one would render the reflection layer alone and the diffuse pass alone and compose them using a compositing package this does give you the advantage of having all the blending tools in your disposal to control exactly how the reflection will appear on your diffuse but it's an unnecessary step and unneeded in most cases especially if you're trying to achieve a look from within the render itself for now let's leave the color as is and try to control where the reflection happens so to do the way to do this is we'll take the uh, our grid basically we'll duplicate this grid and make a white and black version from it if we pipe this right now to the diffuse value we'll see its effect like this the big tiles now are white 
and the cavings are black. This will work for our advantage if we pipe this inside the reflection color. Plug this back to the diffuse and let's see how this looks. So our reflection right now only appears on the blue tiles, which is the effect that we want. Let's add bump mapping to it. We'll take the first grid, enable bump mapping for it, and that should basically take care of everything for us. Now it's time to make our own reflections and have more control of it. We'll start off by making a local copy of this material here. Press F3 and if you click on the material icon, XSI Software will ask you if you want to make a local copy of this material first. You say yes. And now we have our own copy. Let's name this Floor A. You select the first material and we'll call it floor B. So let's take a minute here and think of what we want to do. We want to control the blending of the reflection. This tells us that we need a node that can give us such a control. There are currently two ways of having blending when it comes to layering materials or shaders on top of each other. We'll, look, we'll have a look at the first one which is built inside of the material node itself, any material node. If you take a look at the architectural material, the diffuse port, the, connect the connection node shows a plugged icon. This tells us that there is a node that is plugging inside the diffuse node. If you right click on this node, we'll find blending options. We can also have other shaders or nodes connected to the diffuse. What we want, we want to have a blending node. So let's add an image node for now. We can later on change this, expand this, and let's have a closer look at it. So we have an image node, doesn't matter what it is, and inside the architectural you'll find a new tab opened up, it's called layers which is the image layer here. This gives us blending nodes like those found in Photoshop or composing packages. We have over, in, out, plus, bound, light, dark and light and hard light, soft light, screen, etc. So this is one way of adding a blending node. Let's remove all layers and see the other way of doing it. The other way of doing it is through a mixer node. The mix two colors and mix eight colors are basically the same with the mix eight colors giving you more layers to layer on top of each other. I personally prefer this method of layering because you can clearly see where the blending is happening. So if I pipe the mix two colors to the diffuse node and later on, I can see from first glance where the where the mixing is is being done. Is it on the diffuse, on the reflection, etc.